When we started Carvana, they told us that selling cars 100%
My mic was muted. Good evening and praise the Lord to everybody. So glad to see you in our Tuesday night Bible study every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We get together right here on this social media platform to uh, study the word of God as the Holy Spirit leads us through this series that we're on about the mind of Christ. We praise God for each and every one of you. Will you do me a favor and do what the bottom of the screen says? Please like and share this video so that it can be a blessing to somebody else. And if you are joining us, then just say hello, say what's up, say, hey, how you doing? Something like that in the comment section so that we can see who you are. This is a live video. Amen. And so we will be able to see your comments and interact just like if you are in Bible study right here with us. And so uh, you join me here in the sanctuary of Zion Hill, Agape Baptist Church in Capitol Heights, Maryland. I am Pastor Brandon M. Spriggs. And before we start this Bible study, Let's pray. Amen. God, this has been such a busy day for not just me, but for so many people. But God, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to just pause and to hear your word and to know more about you, dear Heavenly Father. So with all the rushing that we've done, with all the quick decisions that we've had to make, with all the uh, uh, things that we had to hurry up and do, Father, we ask that you would just take away from us right now that rushing and that busyness and that hurrying and allow us to just sit and meditate on your word. And so that it can wash us and make us new so that it can clean us up on the inside and make us more like your son, Jesus. So we sit awaiting. Our hearts are open. Our hands are open. Our minds are open. We have expectation. We have anticipation in our hearts that you are going to bless us in this Bible study because your Holy Spirit always guides us into all truth. And we thank you and bless you for it. So lead us now in this Bible study and we'll give your name all the glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. And so uh, if you haven't done it yet, I mean it. Go ahead and say, hey, how you doing, pastor? Something like that so that I can see exactly who I've got on here. We praise God for each and every one of you. We are studying the mind of Christ. And this is actually going to be the last lesson on the mind of Christ. So as we are looking at the mind of Christ, today we are focused in on keeping a healthy mind. Now, I can guarantee you right now. Amen. Hey, First Lady, how you doing? Amen. Good to see you. Or, I don't see you, but I see your comments. So, so good to see you and good evening to you. Amen. Um, so uh, in this uh, mind of Christ that we are talking about, the mind of Christ, uh, keeping a healthy mind, there has never been more um, focus on, praise the Lord, uh, 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 mental health. And how many of you know that for far too long we have neglected our mental health uh, because every time that something came up, we always just say, and we're famous for it in the church community, just saying, uh, pray about it or just leave it in the Lord's hands and let God deal with it. Well, all of that is true. But then what do you do? How do we minister to you? Amen. Good evening, Sister Signer. Uh, good evening, Sister Sharon. Sharon Spriggs. Amen. Amen. First Lady said it's been a great series so far. Amen. I, I agree. It's been a blessing to my life and helping me to remember what Jesus would do. And as we're talking about keeping a healthy mind, I want you to know that God, Jesus, the church is invested in your mental health. I want you to know something here. There is nothing wrong with having a counselor and having a therapist, especially if you have a Christian one, because they know and understand all the physiology, all the science behind how your mind works and how your thought processes work. But then they also are able to bring the scriptural and biblical point of view in there so that we realize that our minds are regenerated by the word of God. So you want somebody giving you counsel and, ther and therapy and uh, somebody who's uh, your psychologist and whatever else you shrink, whatever else you want. You want somebody who knows the word of God that is going to be praying for you daily. Amen. 
as you are going. And so there's nothing wrong with Jesus and a therapist, but it's, it's doubly good when you have Jesus and a Christian therapist. Amen. And if you need to be hooked up with a Christian therapist, trust me, I know a few. I know quite a few, depending on where you are. And um, they will they can meet with you virtually. Uh, they can meet with you uh, in person, depending on where you are, uh, by phone, whatever you might need. There is no reason for any child of God to lose their mind in this season. Nobody needs to go crazy in this season. And the word of God speaks to our mental health. A lot of people don't know this, but the word of God speaks to our mental health. When we're talking about the mind of Christ, we're talking about having a healthy mind, not a sick mind, not a disease written mind, not a mind focused on death and destruction. We're talking about a healthy mindset, a growth mindset. We're talking about the kind of mind that says I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengtheneth me. Amen. We're talking about the kind of mind that when you look at things, you can declare the word and say, oh, man, I ain't got enough money but my God shall, shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. I may not have riches down here, but he's got riches in glory. That's the kind of mindset that you got to have, and it will help you, and it will keep you from going crazy. Uh, and, 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 uh, and I literally mean that, and maybe crazy is not the technical term that we should use for it, but it will keep you from losing your mind. It will keep you in good mental health. So as we're talking about keeping a healthy mind, I want to first say that I'm a pastor and the kind of counseling that I give is pastoral counseling, which comes strictly from the Bible. If you got something going on with you, you can come talk to me. Uh, but I'm also going, if you got something that I am not, uh, it's not in my wheelhouse to deal with, then I'm going to continue to encourage you with scripture. I'm going to continue to pray for you, but then I'm going to refer you to a good Christian counselor that is able to help you with whatever problems that you might have. I'm a pastoral counselor. I I know some things about grief uh, counseling, but I'm not a certified grief counselor. So I would send you to somebody who can help you with that. That is a Christian and that will pray you and nurture you through that so that you get to a healthy point in your mind. All right. So that you can uh, um, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. That's what the old saints used to say. That's how they stayed healthy. That was their mental health. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm going to get there. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But the old saints, they knew how to keep uh, a healthy mind and keep good mental health because uh, they woke up thinking about the Lord, singing a, a little song like Amazing Grace, uh, reading scripture and praying the first thing that they do and praying the last last thing that they do before they go to bed. All of that helps your mindset. So let's get into it. Now, I'm going to throw a few scriptures at you. So if you see it up there and I take it down and you need to see it again, remember, this is an interactive Bible study. Please make sure that you speak up and say, Pastor, can you put that last one back up there again? And as soon as I see it, if I see it, I will put it back up there again. There's so many of you commenting, so I may not get to see every comment, but I will do my best. Now, here's the first scripture that I want you to see as we're talking about a healthy mind. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 16 says, for who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. Amen. Paul focuses on the change that has been made in the believer. You don't have your own mind. You don't have your old mind. You have now the mind of Christ and we receive this by God's Holy Spirit. And so this change doesn't take effect when you think it should. This change takes effect the minute that you give your life to Christ. You may not realize it, but your mind, your mindset started changing the moment you said, Lord, save me. And once you said that, that's when you started looking. First of all, you called him Lord which means that you're willing to do what he says and to know what he says and to walk according to his will. Amen. That's that's the first thing. All right. And so I, I don't know about you, but I would really rather have life and peace 
rather than death. How about you? I don't know anybody who wants to walk around always focused on death. We want to focus on life and peace. Amen. Because that's what God has promised us. Now, here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verse six. It says, for the mindset on the flesh is death. If all you're thinking about is what we have in this life on this earth, then your mindset is on death. Because Why? Because everything here is going to die. I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm not trying to be uh, uh, um, uh, negative. I'm trying to tell you the truth that the mindset on the flesh is death. But look at the rest of it. The mindset on the spirit is life and peace. I would rather have life and peace than to have death. Everything here is going to fade away. You don't believe me? The car that you wanted, you went and got it, and now you got problems with it. Cars break down, tires go flat, batteries run dead. All right. So, so everything here is designed is not is not well. God designed it to uh, to be here, but hey, listen, there were some people uh, a long time ago that ate some fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and now uh, everything that is on earth can't stay here. But everything that is attached to God is going to live. Amen. Maybe not forever here on earth in the physical, but in the spiritual, we are going to live on. Amen. Amen. And so our mindset should be focused on life and peace, not just life, but also peace. I know some people, they have been in chaos for so long and they have been functioning in chaotic situations and chaotic relationships and chaotic communication and all of this kind of stuff for so long they think is normal. They think that's the way it's supposed to be. They think this life of the flesh, which is death, is the way that it's supposed to be. Can I tell you that the mindset on the spirit the mind of Christ gives us not just life, but it also gives us peace. So we turn back to that scripture in first uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse 16. For who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So here's what I would have you to know. I would have you to know that God's word speaks a great deal about our minds and it speaks a great deal about our thoughts. And it gives us very important instructions on how to keep a healthy mind and how to support our mental health, on how to keep everything that that God has placed on the inside of us there and sane. Amen. So the first scripture I want us to look at, Isaiah chapter 26, verse three. Here's what it says to us in, in the way of mental health. You will keep him. That's Isaiah is talking to God. You will keep him in perfect peace whose what does it say? Mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Let's unpack that for a moment. You will keep him, God. Isaiah's talking to God. So God will keep him. Who's him? I any one of us. In perfect peace. That means that it can't be bothered. That means it's the it's ultimate peace. Perfect peace. Not just peace. Perfect peace. How? whose mind is stayed on you. Who's you again? God. So if I keep my mind on God, I will be kept in perfect peace. And why will I have perfect peace? Because I trust in God. Man, oh man. That means that whatever goes on in my life, I'm really not bothered because I know God is can handle it. There is not one thing that God can't handle. And as long as I've got him and as long as my mind is stayed on him, then I can trust him to handle whatever is trying to eat away at my mental health. I let him handle it. And then I can, and as I trust him, praise the name of the Lord, I have peace, not just any kind of peace, perfect peace. 
is what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse three. That's one thing that the Bible says about our minds. Here's the next thing the Bible says about our minds. It says, set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. Now, why is that? Uh, and it goes on. If you read Colossians chapter three, the entire chapter, you'll see it goes on to say all these other things are going to fade away. Right. And, and we just talked about that. You worried about you so invested in your good looks. Guess what will happen after a while? You ain't going to look so good anymore. It happens to everybody. All right. I'd have seen people that was, man, model material when I saw them in high school and in college. And now I see some of y'all on Facebook. And I was like, what didn't happen to you? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm, I'm playing. All right. Don't nobody get mad. I'm playing. But it, 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 nobody looks the same. Amen. Uh, hair gets gray. Come on, talk back to me. Uh, skin gets wrinkled. Uh-huh. Uh, them, them tattoos that you had on and you thought they was all that and everything. Now they starting to look all like, you know, before it looked like tapestry. And now it looked like graffiti. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all today. But listen, the truth is nothing stays the same. So set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Because if you set your, th your mind on things above, uh, uh, moth can't come in and eat away at it. Right. Corruption can't come in. Uh, people can't come in and steal it and take it. Nothing can come in and destroy it because you have set your mind on something that is above. It can't be tampered with. It can't. It, it can't it's infallible. It's, it's inerrant. It's the word of God. Right. It cannot fall. It cannot falter. It cannot fail. All right. So praise the, praise the name of the Lord for that. Um, and so, yeah, all of these things that we have down here, they're going to fade away. That nice car that you're thinking about is going to break down. That house, uh, the roof is going to need repairing. The, the basement might start having cracks in the foundation and you got to repair that. The paint starts peeling off of it. Uh, yeah. And there's a reason why the old saints used to say um, this old building keeps on leaning. I got to move to a better home. That's what we're talking about. Having your mind set on the better home when it is set on where God is taking you, realizing that this world is not your home and that you're a stranger passing through, but you're on your way to a building that's not made by hand, uh, uh, somewhere, a mansion that God, Jesus said that he has for us. When your mind is on that, then when stuff happens down here, you ain't tripping. Here's the reason why you're not tripping. I was driving down the street and I saw this ra the most raggedy car that I've ever seen in my entire 38 years on this earth. I mean, I'm telling y'all, this was a hot, this is what they call a hot mess. All right. This, this car was messed up and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, man, I done had some cars like that. Uh, and so I, I, I watch it as it goes by. It's, it's got rust all around the fender and it's been hit a couple times. The bumper hanging off of it. Uh, I think it had like a, a, a plastic bag or something like that taped up to the window uh, where the window used to be. It, it was a raggedy mess. All right. And then as it went by, it had the nerve to have a bumper sticker that says my other car is a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> what does that say for us concerning this scripture? Colossians chapter three, verse, verse two, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. It tells us that just like that car, it might be beat up. It might be messed up. It might look like it can't make it and it can't go on. Whoever was driving that car was not tripping. They were unbothered by my looks and how I was sitting there laughing as it was going down the street because they realized that they got something better at their home back at the house. Can I talk to you for a minute? You have something better waiting on you. Whatever it is that you tripping over on this life, please don't please listen to me and don't trip on it. Set your mind on things above and not things on the earth. But it's hard, Pastor Spriggs. I know it's hard. I, it, it, I'm not saying that is easy. I'm just saying realize just like this guy that whatever is falling apart and raggedy down here can't compare to what God has for you up there. Yes, Lord. That's what God has for you. Okay. So, um, 
Th that's that scripture. And then I want us to look quickly at Romans 12 and two before I get to our main scripture for tonight that we're going to uh, take a uh, take a real good look at um, Romans chapter 12, verse two. And do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's look at it again. Do not be conformed to this world. Conform. Let's break it down. Uh, con means with. Formed means shaped, right? So don't be shaped with this world. Don't be shaped to this world, okay? Uh, but be transformed. Now, break that one down. Trans means that it moves, right? All right. Transportation, right? It, it goes through. Transformed. Changed. Okay. So it's changed. But be changed by the what? How do we change? Renewing of your mind. See, here's where somebody had you messed up. They told you that when you got saved, that that was it. And that's all you needed to do. And that was not all. That was not it. That was not all you needed to do. You needed to immediately start working on renewing your mind. Because before that day that you gave, or before that moment that you gave your life to Christ, your mindset was all about the flesh and the world and whatever the devil's program was. You now have to renew your mind so that it can be about Jesus and God's will and the kingdom. And you have to learn that the same way that a child has to learn to walk and talk and do whatever else that they are able to do now. That you may Prove, prove what? That good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can I tell you that when you renew your mind, it changes you and you don't stay with the world and it proves to people that God is good, that God's will is acceptable and that God's will is perfect. And that's what it proves. The people who knew you back when you used to walk up in the club and shut it down. I mean, I'm telling you, you used to close the place out, last call and everything. And now they see you at church, singing in the choir, uh, serving in ministry, whatever ministry it may be, attending Bible study, Sunday school, saying amen in church, shouting and falling out and all of this stuff. You've proven that God's will is good. It is acceptable and it's perfect and your mind is changing. And what did the old saints used to say about it? The things I used to say, I don't say anymore. You can't say anything that hasn't already started in your mind or the, the places I used to go. I don't go anymore. You can't go anywhere unless it first originate in your thought life, because that's how the signal goes from your head to your feet. Let's go over here or to your hands. Let's go do this. All right. So renewing your mind changes everything, whatever habit that you want to stop, renew your mind, study the word of God. And if you need my help in knowing what the word of God says about it, then reach out to me. I'll be happy to help. All right. Whatever it is, take the word of God, confess the word of God, read the word of God, pray the word of God, believe the word of God. Amen. And it will renew your mind. And if it renews your mind, it's going to change your habits and your actions. And if it changes your, ha your actions and your habits, then you're proving to the world that God's will is good and acceptable and perfect. All right. So now let's get into our study scripture for today. Go to your Bibles, Philippians chapter four, verses six through eight. And I won't be uh, it won't be much longer. If this is good, say something in the comment section because y'all done got quiet on me. I don't know if I'm helping you or not, but if I am, let me know and I'll keep going. If I'm not, then we'll see what else the Holy Spirit has to say to us today. Amen. Philippians chapter four, verses six through eight. So I want to read this to us. Um, it says, and this is the Christian Standard Bible. Um, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Notice there's an S on requests there, right? You don't have to limit yourself to one per day. I ask God for several things throughout the day. I also give him praise and glory and honor several times throughout the day. Let's move on. Verse seven. And the peace of God, 
which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Final verse, verse eight. Finally, brother, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Those last four, four words get me every time. Dwell on these things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Jatavian, Brother McLean. We're so glad that you're on with us today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Sister Carr. Amen. Helping so much. Praise God. We're glad that it is. Praise the name of God. Um, listen, that last part is going to help you even more. It says, dwell on these things. Here's what, and y'all know I'm telling the truth when I say it. We dwell on the wrong things. We dwell. So if we're talking, and remember the lesson tonight is the mind of Christ, keeping a healthy mind, right? And so if we're talking about our mental health and keeping a a healthy mind and using God's word to help us to have a healthy mind and to uh, and to look after and to maintain our uh, mental health. Amen. If, if we're looking at the word of God for this, then we must understand that we can't dwell on things that are destroying our mindset or uh, keeping us from uh, uh, being healthy in our mindset. Amen. Don't don't dwell on those things. Here the scripture says to us very plainly in uh, uh, Philippians chapter four, verse eight, the last four words dwell on these things. What things? Well, he says, he says, finally, brothers, and this is how he concludes the chapter. I think the book, uh, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true. So that's what I'm going to think about, whatever is true. All right. Not what people tell me their truth is, because all truth has to be based on something. And we based our truth on the word of God because his word is truth. Amen. OK, so whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. So what am I thinking about all day? Uh, I'm thinking about true honest, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to get to this in a moment, but it, it, I'm going to come back to it I, rather in a moment. But sometimes the devil throws a monkey wrench in there and he tries to uh, tempt us with thoughts that we just absolutely know we should not uh, uh, be thinking, right? It, it is not that you are bad for the thought entering your mind. Just don't let it stay there. OK, we'll get more into that. But so what should we do whenever those thoughts come back in? Redirect your thinking to whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. All right. So you have to ask yourself uh, when somebody gives you too much change back down at the McDonald's. Is this is this true? Am I going to just is this being true, right? Should, should I take this money and just walk off and say, oh, it's their mistake. They, they should have known better. Or should I, what would Jesus do in this situation? Y'all know Jesus would give it back. Don't try and talk yourself out of it. You know he would give it back. Is this honorable? What, what I'm about to do, what I'm about to say, how I'm about to act. Is this honorable? Honorable to who? God. Does it honor God, would God be pleased with if God was sitting right here in the room and saw me uh, acting this way, talking this way, doing what I'm doing? Would God be happy with me? That's what you ask yourself. You got to You got to ask yourself that. And you got to you got to think like that. That's what you think on. That's what you dwell on. Is it just? Is it is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it going to be commendable? Is it moral excellence? Nobody's perfect, but it didn't say perfect. It says moral excellence. Is it praiseworthy? If it's any of these things, that's what I'm going to dwell on. I don't care about that other stuff. Whatever pops into my head, thoughts, temptations to steal, to lie, to lust, to uh, 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 whatever else, skip Bible study, whatever it is. 
saints of God, dwell on the word of God. So how do we do that? I'm so glad you asked. The first thing that you got to do is read your Bible. Look at the person on the couch next to you. Look them square in the eye and say, read your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, let us know. We will get you a Bible. Somehow we will get you a Bible. Okay. You got to open your Bible and read God's truth. Because you may be studying something uh, in particular, like how we're studying the mind of Christ right now in Bible study or in Sunday school, how we're talking about faith. You can even use a devotional. If you don't have one, then periodically I put up a devotional message on uh, the Pastor Brandon M. Spriggs Facebook page and the Brandon M. Spriggs Facebook page. Um, But then also we do it on YouTube and on Instagram as well. And so we can get you hooked up with that. But you can find a devotional to lead you or just sometimes you just need to randomly open up the Bible and just start reading. Maybe look at the scripture that was preached last Sunday or the scripture that was taught just last night in Bible study. Look at it again. Dwell on it. See, here's the problem. We know we say it's hard, but we know how to dwell on things, because if somebody does something wrong to you, You know how to dwell on it. You don't give them a pass at all. You don't let them get away with it. Next time you see them, you like, and you just wait. And when I see them, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You are literally thinking about how you're going to tell them off. That's dwelling on it. That's the same thing you got to do with the word of God. You got to dwell on the word of God. Amen. You got to dwell on the word of God. I'll say it one more time. You got to dwell on the word of God. Amen. Amen. Okay. And so how do you do that? By reading your Bible, read your Bible. Now, here's the next thing that you got to do. You got to think about his handiwork. And I'm talking about God. You got to think about God's handiwork. So how do we do that? Here's how. At some point. Turn off your electronic devices. And it's hard. I know it's hard for me because it's how I stay connected to all of you. And I'm always thinking, what if they need something? What if they need scripture? What if they need prayer? What if they uh, need this? And what if they need that? At some point, you got to turn it off. You got to take a few steps outside. Or if you can't go outside, just look out your window. If you can't look out your window, turn on one of them nature channels or something like that. And notice all the things our creator has designed just for us. See, you worried about an Apple uh, phone, uh, an Apple phone. God has designed fruit for you to eat on trees. And you can just look out there and be in awe and amazement. One thing I learned, and I don't like nature, but one thing I learned by my la- this last va- family vacation that I took, we went from the beach all the way to the mountains uh, in eight days. And I had to become one with nature as much as I can stand bees buzzing by and trying to hit you and all that stuff. I learned how to be at peace and appreciate his handiwork. You'll be surprised what it'll do for your mindset. When you're not sitting there constantly watching the television and seeing a bunch of junk that is destroying your mental health. Just turn it off sometimes. But I might miss Bible study, uh, Pastor. It'll always be here on the page. You can always come back to it. It is. Of course, I would love for you to be here with me live. But if you're not, okay, you can always come back to it when you're ready for it. That's the convenience of this technology. But get outside. Breathe some fresh air. Look at all that God has made. Jesus did this. Think about how many parables Jesus made about wheat and tear or about goat and sheep or about uh, how, how he used uh, fig trees and, and, and um, uh, what else? Fields. Right. And all of these different things to teach us about the kingdom of God. It was. Um, thinking about God's handiwork and realizing that all of it reveals God's intentions and reveals God's plan for our life. So the first thing I told you to do was read your Bible. Second thing I told you to do was think about his handiwork. Here's the next thing I want you to do. 
I want you to know that he's with you. Know that he's with you. If you believe that, amen, then you're going to be all right. Yes, indeed. If you believe it, you're going to be all right. Here's what I want you to do. Some people ain't going to do it because they're scared. But here's, here's what I want you to do. Turn off your electronic devices. Turn off the phone. Put it on silent. Put it on the other side of the room. Turn off the TV. Nothing. Just close your eyes for three minutes. Block out all distractions. Let your mind. As, as we said, according to Philippians chapter four, verses six through eight, let your mind think about the Lord. Let your mind think about the Savior. Let your mind just continuously just get lost in thought for three minutes. You can set a timer for three minutes. I guarantee you that three minutes will go by so quickly. You might have to push that button so you can get three more minutes. Three minutes of just thinking about the Savior. Picture him in your mind. Now, we don't know exactly what he looks like, but I mean what what he is to you right beside you. Amen. In his presence, I guarantee you that you will feel the presence of God. I guarantee you he's already there. Amen. He's already there. You can't hide from him. You can't run from him. The Bible declares it. So he's already there. He's everywhere at the same time. But now what are we doing? We are knowing that he's there. We're acknowledging his presence. It's so easy to forget whose company that you're in. I remember getting lost in my work one time. I was so wrapped up in it. I forgot somebody was in the room with me. And when they finally spoke up, it scared the bejesus out of me because I forgot that they were in the room. And can I tell you that we can get distracted by things in life and forget that God is right there with us. So know that he's with you. Amen. Let's go back over it again. We got to read your Bible. Think about his handiwork and know that he's with you. Here's the, here's the last thing. Remember your blessings. Remember your blessings. There was a hymn that said, uh, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. And it's amazing how focusing on the blessings and not the burdens that God has given us and being thankful can turn our focus back to praising our King. If you focus on the blessings, don't worry about the burdens. Pastor, how can you say don't worry about the burdens? These, these bills got to get paid. Uh, this got to happen. That's got to happen. That's true. But here's what God promised. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, take my yoke upon you uh, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Just do my will and I promise you everything else will work out fine. Now, it doesn't mean that you just don't do anything. But do his will and things will work out just fine. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So our thoughts, our affections, our emotions, our actions, they are uh, our actions and our emotions are all affected by our thoughts. You can't do it until you think it. And we must be careful of the thoughts we allow our minds to entertain. So this is what I said I was getting back to. And so thoughts may seem to appear out of nowhere. And sometimes um, it, it seems like it's our own thoughts, but we have a choice of whether to allow our minds to dwell on them or turn our focus back to Jesus. Why? Because according to Roman, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, Jesus is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Let all of our thoughts point back to Jesus. Even when a bad thought comes back and redirect it and say, uh-uh, that's not the mind of Christ. That's not what Jesus would do. And that will keep you in a healthy mindset. Now, of course, the first step, you know what I'm about to say, is to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
and to allow him to change us. Because unless you do that, nothing is going to change. If you don't know Jesus and how real he is, then here's what I want you to do. I'm about to put it up on the screen. Uh, well, first, I'm going to say Romans, the Roman road. And I instructed the church um, to keep this in your Bible. So some of you already know it and you can turn to it as I'm giving it. But Romans 3.10 says that there is none righteous. No, not one. Everybody has messed up. Nobody is in right standing with God. Uh, Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody has messed up up every single one of us. So how is it that Brandon Spriggs became Pastor Brandon M. Spriggs? How is it that Brother Watermelon became Deacon Watermelon? And how is it that this one who was a sinner became a saint? How, how, how did all of that happen? Uh, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners. Now, see, here's the thing. Romans 6, 23 tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. But Romans 5 and 8 tells us that God didn't wait on us. He's commended his love toward us that while we were still sinning, while we were still doing it and enjoying it, he already died for us. The moment that we realized we needed a savior, he's already extended salvation. So what do we have to do? We got to accept it, right? If somebody handing you something, it's not yours until you accept it. And so that's what Jesus does for us. And so then Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. If that's you today, then I want you to pray this prayer I'm about to put on the screen. You can pray it with me. I want you to pray it with me out loud because the Bible says you got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, according to Romans 10 and 9. And so here's what here's your prayer of salvation. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins. I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in your word, Romans 10, 9, that if we confess the Lord, uh, that we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as the Lord of my soul. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. And according to his word, right now, I am saved. A in Jesus' name, amen. And your next step is to get into a Bible-based church. A Bible-based church is a church that teaches and believes the word of God. Amen. If you want to join here, just say so, and we are glad to have you. But if not, if you're somewhere else, we will send you where you want to go. We just want to see you get saved. Amen. Amen. A few announcements I want to make to you all before uh, we give the closing prayer on this Bible study. Thank you all for staying with us and for liking and sharing this. And if you have not done it, it's still not too late because somebody can always catch it on the rewind and see it on your page. And that's you doing that evangelism that we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. And so uh, a few things I want to put up on your screen. Um, first of all, uh, here are weekly services. Uh, every Sunday at 10 a.m. We have Sunday school right here on Facebook Live. Um, we have Sunday morning worship. It is a pre-recording of the previous Sunday. If you would like to be with us in worship, then all you have to do is just join us. Amen. At 8509 Walker Mill Road in Capitol Heights, Maryland. We'll put that up on the screen in just a moment. Every Sunday at 11, please wear your mask and we will... Um, we will observe all COVID-19 safety protocols. Um, our prayer call is every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And uh, that's our conference call number there, 857-216-6700. Put in the code 708547. And then our... Um, 
our Bible study, which you are attending right now. If you like and share this page that you're watching it on, then I guarantee you, you will see the Bible study the next time we do it. Um, youth ministry services is every first Thursday of each month and every third Thursday of each month on Zoom. And there again is our information um, and how you can give if you are uh, feeling so led to give or if you need to reach out to us for any reason. There's our email and our phone number. Um, this coming up, coming up on this first Sunday in September, we are going to have a backpack blessing. Now, we're not blessing the backpacks. We don't bless inanimate objects. All right. Uh, but we believe God has a blessing for the person that will be wearing the backpack. And so uh, we ask that you all of our young people and even our old people, if you're going to college, even wear your backpack to church as we pray God's blessing on our youth this school year. That will be Sunday, September the 5th at 11 a.m. right here at Zion Hill Agape Baptist Church, 8509 Walker Mill Road in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Listen, this coming Saturday uh, is a march on uh, Washington for voting rights. It's hosted by Reverend Al Sharpton and Martin Luther King uh, III. And it will be this August the 28th, 2000. In 21, they're going to uh, start off at McPherson Park, McFix, McF <laughs> first day with new teeth, sorry, McPherson Square Park. Uh, and that's at 15th and H in Northwest Washington, D.C. And then we're going to be marching past Black Lives Matter Boulevard, the White House and the Washington Monument all the way up to the Capitol. And that's where we will have the closing rally is going to I think everything is going to they're going to start gathering there at about 8 a.m. And um, the march is going to start at 10 and you can march. Amen. For those voting rights. Amen. God bless you, Sister Signa. We love you all dearly as well. Say hello to your babies. Amen. We praise God for you. Well, we're going to get ready to go down from this place. And thank you all for staying with us in this Bible study. We praise God for you. Lord, we pray your divine protection because there's so much um, uh, evil out there, not just the pandemic, but Lord, there's also just wickedness, people doing crazy stuff. We thank you, Lord, that it has not come nigh our dwelling. Or if it did, you protected us. God, you protected us at times we didn't even know it. Car accidents that should have happened, but because of your grace and mercy and your divine favor and protection, it did not happen. And so, God, we ask that you would continue to keep us uh, with your unseen power, your guardian angels on each and every side of us as we go about doing your will. Help us to keep the mind of Christ and then to keep our mind stayed on you so that we can have good mental health. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you, precious people, and we will see you next time. Until next time, keep advancing the kingdom.